In medieval England, there is a tale of someone who grew to become one of the most famous rulers of Britain, known for his Knights of the Round Table and for uniting the people of his land. King Arthur was a warrior, a knight, and a king who killed giants and monsters. Taken as a baby by Merlin, a mighty wizard who had everlasting magical powers and who was mentored by the great dragon, Kilgara. Arthur was taken to Sir Ector, a nobleman and knight who brought Arthur up as his own son. Years later, upon becoming king, Arthur became at one with his magical sword Excalibur before embarking upon his greatest quest with his Knights of the Round Table, a quest for the mythical Holy Grail, a cup from which Jesus drank at the Last Supper, which only the pure in heart and deed might behold. And whilst he fails in his quest to lay his hands upon the Holy Grail, King Arthur's story and his mythical tale continues into the legend that he is known today as his everlasting aura inspires the holy grail of the microband world. Today, several thousands of years later, we're taking the macro lens to the Aurora of Arthur by Valamor, a watch inspired by King Arthur's valiant spirit as we take a close look at every single aspect of this watch as I always try to do for you, my lovely, lovely viewers, all five of you, and stick around to the end of my in-depth analysis of the Valamor Aurora of Arthur for my usual end of review walk around as I take it around the beautiful and historic city of York here in North Yorkshire, including a wander around one of the world's truly great Gothic cathedrals, the York Minster. As ever, it's great to have you here. Now let's look at an overdramatic specification of this watch, all in the next 90 seconds. Valamor is a brand that originated from Hong Kong and is famed for its designs and intertwined wholly original designs with Gothic aesthetic. Their founder, Raymond Jones, has over two decades of experience in the international watchmaking industry which, coupled with his profound appreciation and passion for medieval art and themes, inspired a desire to create 100% original and intriguing timepieces. Now the name Valamor combines the expressions valiant and armour into one and Valamor say that their brand embodies our commitment to courage, daring originality and breaking free from the mundane whilst characterising extraordinary individuality and the pursuit of ultimate style. And Valamor have had several ranges now sold out and discontinued, um, including the Makados, the Valnut, the Calibernus 1, 
Caliburnus 2, Caliburnus 3, while still selling at this moment in time the Kilgara, a beautiful wash that I actually had grown accustomed to in the past, um, and this in my grubby but very pampered hands today, the Aurora of Arthur, which you can find available in several colourways, including the purple, the black, the blue, and this, the red. So just to reiterate what was said in a dark and quite scary 90 second spec, I'm still recovering from that one, this, the Aurora of Arthur, comes in at 13mm thick without the crystal, 40mm in diameter, 47mm lug to lug, 22mm at the lug, with this 316L stainless steel bracelet tapering down to 20mm at its butterfly clasp. Ok, so starting with the dial and working our way out, I mean what can I say, it's a quite stunning Fumi dial crafted from natural mother of pearl, I mean in all honesty at first glance you see a somewhat uh, pattern on the dial and it's not without inspection that you realise it's mother of pearl and quite beautiful it is. It's a Fumi dial so it takes on a bit of a darker shade as it goes out from the centre of the dial towards the Riot and gives this watch plenty of depth in colour. It looks far more obvious in natural daylight and, and in real life as opposed to in front of the camera lens I must admit, but anyway aside from that deep foamy mother of pearl dial, what really is one of many many striking features of this dial, perhaps the best part for me and something which I simply can't wait to talk about is this fantastic open heart offset from the centre and position between the 6 and the 8 and offering the wearer a quite stunning glimpse into its movement and its beating heart. Now that open heart is sandwiched between small seconds on the right of the open heart and a 24 hour display on the left and I really do feel that the addition of these two functions as opposed to a dial design with simply an open heart adds a beautiful realm of complexity to what would have otherwise been a cleaner but less intricate dial. And notice the small seconds and part of its dial overlapping and into the open heart, whereas the 24 hour display doesn't, allowing the wearer that glimpse to that movement as I mentioned, but not in its circular entirety. That blend of that open heart and the sub dials either side of it gives this watch a very romantic aura in my opinion. And also not the Valamo logo under the 12 and dare I say it's quite understated and very subtle and it really doesn't need to be much more than that as all the elements of the Valamo brand, the values of their brands and what Valamo represent is incorporated in literally every single corner of this watch. The R markers are these quite stunning multifaceted indices, I mean really really premium, each and every one taking on this beautiful gothic shape multifaceted and highly polished silver outlining its brilliant white centre. It may sound poetic but it really feels like every single hour tells its own story, and not the smaller hour markers at the 5, 7 and 9 to compensate for the small seconds, open heart and 24 hour function respectively. And you have beaver's teeth or should I say dragon's teeth at the 12 to give it a lovely top heavy feel to this beautiful set of indices. With regards to minute markers you have inverted triangles representing every 5 minutes with circular minute markers, um, all of which are printed in white on this deep red riot that falls between the dial and the bezel. Now my personal take on that is that those minute markers belong perfectly to that riot as opposed to the dial itself which for me gives the hour markers each individual space to showcase themselves without the complication of minute markers clogging up the perimeter of that dial, so for me a really nice touch. Both the hour and minute hands are almost lozenges in style, very distinct, elongated with a slimmer base that widens towards the centre and tapers again towards a sharp tip. They are both skeleton towards that pinion and these hands are inspired by the sword in the stone. Now legend says that Arthur obtained the British throne by pulling a sword out from an anvil sitting atop a stone that appeared in the churchyard on Christmas Eve, and that inspiration is mainly found at the foot of the hour hand um, with what appears to be the quillion or the cross guard of the sword incorporated into it and Valamore utilised diamond cut technology to ensure that the hands are precisely crafted uh, whilst also adopting a semi polishing technique on both the hour and minute hands that leaves one side of the hands polished and the other side brushed, and this um, really does contrast perfectly against each other in many many angles of light to add depth to the face of this watch and very much adds a deluxe and luxurious experience to reading the time. 
the smaller hands on the small seconds and the 24R functions are of the similar design aesthetic if not exactly the same but all the hands of this dial certainly complement each other very very well. Now what else can I say? Man those hands feel so so delicate and rightly so in my opinion. You simply won't find dominating hands here on the Aurora of Arthur. In fact, arguably, it's the multifaceted hour markers that very much dominate this dial. Now working our way further out, the 60 click unidirectional bezel of this watch sports a typeface that was crafted by Valamore and engraved here every 10 minutes on this deep red ceramic insert, which Valamore say mirrors medieval typography with its upright sharp and angular lines and I must say they've done a fantastic job. As I mentioned before, the Valamore brand oozes out of every single corner of this watch and the bezel is no exception. In fact, arguably it's the bezel itself that really exudes and radiates that medieval feel to this watch, not least by finishing off the medieval vibes of this watch with its medieval font, but also with its geometrical design here on its perimeter that is inspired by the majestic body of Kilgara, the one and only renowned dragon of Arthurian legends. The crystal is dome sapphire with three layer anti-glare coating for enhanced clarity. Now the edge of that dome doesn't distort in particular the hour markers or the rear too much and in certain angles of light that three layer AR coating seems to be doing its job very well indeed. And the face of this watch is lit up with super luminova on the hands, on the hour markers and on the bezel markings. And well there's not really much else I can say about the loom as it really does speak for itself. The case is 40mm in diameter and made from 316L stainless steel but what's really interesting about this case is that its design has successfully obtained a design patent in January 2022 in the United Kingdom and all member countries of the European Union, affirming Valamo's commitment to original design and craftsmanship. Now the case is brushed with high polished chamfered edging on both sides of the case from lug tip hugging the underside of that bezel into the other lug tip and the right hand part of the case protrudes nice and gently to form these two scallops which develop into this very low key crown guard and man what a crown it guards. The whole concept of this right hand part of the case um, and the push bull crown is inspiration from the hilt of a sword. Now the hilt refers to several parts that make up the entire sword handle. It is comprised of the pommel, the grip and the guard and these scalloped elements that develop into the crown guard and the crown itself gives this entire right hand side of the case a quite brilliant feel of a hilt of a sword, perhaps even Excalibur herself. To finish this utterly fantastic part of the watch you have a quite magnificent deep black Swarovski crystal pointed and placed into the centre of that crown. And also note that the Valamo Aurora of Arthur is water resistant at 10 atm or 100 meters which is great if you want to visit the legendary Lady of the Lake. When you order the Aurora of Arthur you have the option of three straps, a red vintage Italian leather strap which is hand stitched with a contrasting colour and lined with soft beige nubuck leather. There's also the option of a Japanese NBR rubber strap with gothic emblem and note that both the Italian leather and the Japanese NBR rubber straps both have a stainless steel buckle that sports what looks like a Celtic design. Now the third strap is this quite magnificent 316L stainless steel bracelet which features this very iconic dragon scale design. The links that surround those dragon scale links are brushed and the bracelet tapers down from 22mm at the lug to 20mm at this butterfly clasp. Now I absolutely love the design of this bracelet but for me the butterfly clasp will, I don't know, will let you down in terms of micro adjustment. You might be lucky and find yourself with a perfect fit you might be unlucky and be some 4mm off from that comfortable wear with nowhere to go really but to either accept a tight feel on the wrist or an overly loose one. Saying that I actually don't think that from purely a design uh, point of view you could have this watch on anything other than a butterfly clasp. The whole design aesthetic and the brand lends itself towards a bracelet that feels endless around the wrist. Now my personal preference is always comfortability over design but this watch um, would feel so wrong in my opinion with a deployment clasp. But overall it's a game of luck as to whether or not you'll get that perfect fit as opposed to a game of micro adjustment to find that perfect fit. You might get lucky, you might not. So my advice would be to get yourself an additional strap of either the Italian leather and or the Japanese rubber just in case. 
Now all three straps are quick release and it's also worth mentioning that Valamore um, have quite the range of straps available as optional add-ons so it's definitely worth um, having a look at what's available if you want additional straps. The movement is a, wait for it, a Miata 82S7, 21 joules, 21,600 beats per hour, 42 hours of power reserve, hacking, and bear in mind that the 82S7 is in many ways a specialized uh, movement because it has small seconds at 5, open balance at the 7, and a 24 hour indicator at 9. And um, to fully wind the movement, you need to turn the crown 40 times in a clockwise direction. And that movement is contained behind this captivating exhibition case back. Looks really cool in my opinion, especially with what I can only describe as probably the best branded rotor I have ever, ever seen. That rotor in gold features a 3D double dragon engraving with a Valamore logo and brand name slap bang in the middle um, in a quite imposing black. Um, you have some spec details on the perimeter of that case back that also sports this really cool pattern which resembles that of dragon scales. Again, yet more detail to really compound the fact that this watch's inspiration can be found in every single corner of this watch. On my 7.5 inch wrist it wears, well what can I say, I'm one of the lucky ones as it wears pretty damn good. Looks great too with that bracelet design, in particular the dragon scale links going all the way around my wrist without the consistency um, of its design being disrupted or compromised by a clunky clasp. Now I weighed this in at 161 grams, so a fairly decent chunk on the wrist, so it definitely lets you know that it's there. But it's the legend of Arthur, right? And all that magnificent steel wasn't ever going to be worn with a whimper. Now that big foamy dial and ever so slightly thinnish bezel gives this the feel of a lot of dial on the wrist. Um, and with a beautiful red mother of pearl showcasing that open heart, rightfully so in my opinion. Though saying that, it's only 40mm, but the 22mm lug width, coupled with the fact that the crown doesn't really stick out too much, prevents making this dial feel overly fat, or should I say, its face feel overly protruding from the bracelet edges. Um, I mean, proportionally you see a lot of bracelet in contrast to the width of the dial when viewed at face value. Now I love that the bracelet is all brushed, um, the case mainly brushed less those chamfered edges, um, but the dial really stealing the show with this high shine hour markers and well a dial full of polished silver that adds a lot of grandeur to its look and of course that absolutely stunning and mesmerizing open heart. I mean I've probably not mentioned that open heart enough, it really is beyond stunning. Now I took the Aurora of Arthur around the beautiful city of York on a cold and very bitter morning and I actually set the 24 hour display further into the day so you could see that function better in all its glory. So please stick around to the end of my review to see that particular walk around. In terms of price, the Aurora of Arthur comes in at a cool 398 British pounds, 485 USD or 460 euros on the red vintage Italian leather strap. 406 British pounds, 495 USD, 470 euros on the Japanese rubber or 484 British pounds, 590 USD, 560 euros with this amazing stainless steel bracelet. Probably bang on as to where this price point should be in my humble opinion and I personally think that you won't be disappointed if those figures left your bank account and was replaced with this truly stunning watch. It's also worth noting that each Aurora of Arthur comes in a customary storybook presentation box illustrating Arthurian tales which is a lovely little touch so actually the very unique brand experience you get around your wrist actually begins with the packaging it's sent in. Overall, well wow. Look it's early days in 2024 but already this has the look and feel of a microbrand watch that is already a serious contender for my microbrand watch of the year. Perhaps dare I even say the nicest microbrand I've ever had on my wrist. It just oozes premium, has an overall lustrous and glamorous feel around my wrist. From the patented uh, case design and its respective Swarovski crystal, to the Fumi dial, sub-dials and that open heart that gives me vibes of the heart of Arthur himself. Brave, heroic and legendary. Now this colorway of this product range is by far my favorite, from the deep red bezel and the mother of pearl taking on a lighter persona towards its magnificent center, almost whispering hues of pink. In certain angles of light, this watch speaks to you. I mean, it really does. It often reminded me that it was on my wrist and I just had to stop for a moment and take on its tail. The story around every corner of this astonishing watch and a depth to it that, for me, like King Arthur himself, gives it what I think will be an everlasting legendary status.